Welcome in everyone to our studio. Mr. Buttons and I are excited to show you Studio Tour Part 2 today. Someone asked me if I could talk about the paints and right over here you see I keep a lot of frequently used paints. Here is my box of gouache paints. I like to buy Winsor Newton. I pretty much exclusively like to buy Winsor Newton paints. They're really an old supplier and maker of paints and I really feel the quality is really good. It's essential for me to have a box that keeps them really airtight. Here's just some other kinds of tube watercolors. Oops! And I also like to keep them handy for the students. In these boxes, which as I said are pretty airtight, I keep the oil paints. Oil paints, as you know, have binders and such that make them a little bit smelly. In addition, the linseed oil is also kind of a very odorous oil. You can see that again, I love Winsor & Newton paints, and this happens to be their artisan collection of water-based oil paints. And it sounds like an oxymoron to have water-based oil, but they've somehow developed it, and you can thin it just with water. I have loads and loads of colors. As you can see, I have one that looks like it's the warm colors, and the other is a whole bunch of different cool colors. What I need to show you here are some of my favorite colors. I always get myself a Prussian blue, or as close to a true blue like that that I can. Lemon yellow is essential because you're going to mix with these primaries. I like to get a good red, which would be a cadmium red, medium is good. These colors are essential. Everyone is also going to need white because you're always going to want to lighten your colors. You need to have a black or a Payne's gray to also darken the colors. Two other colors that if you only can get five colors, I highly recommend. So here we have three four, five. You see that there's five essential colors, red, yellow, and blue, black, and white. In addition, I highly recommend you get burnt umber and yellow oak. Those colors together with these primaries can make pretty much everything you want. If you want to get a little bit fancy, you could get a viridian green too. Now sometimes you might want to use oil paint. It has a way of mixing and spreading and drying that is so unique and beautiful. The problem in the past has been the toxicity level, both to the paints, we know the cadmiums and some of the blues are not healthy for us, but also the solvents that you need to use for cleaning up. You're going to be using a turpentine or some kind of a thinner to clean up. Even odorless thinner is not good for you. It just means you're not smelling the fumes. Having the ability to clean up with soap and water, such as in these water-based oil paints, is really unique and fantastic. So that's one of the tricks I'm going to share with you is that you can clean up this oil paint with soap and water. You don't have to thin it with nasty solvents. If you would like to get an extender, you could use an oil such as linseed oil. That will make the paint a little bit shiny. Then I'm going to show you this handy little contraption. I don't like to waste paint because you know how expensive it is. So I just clip it in here like that and then roll this up. It makes a nice tight tube as you can see really keeps the paint from going dry in there. I love to do it and in fact some of my younger students like to help me with this too. I think you would be able to find this if you searched for a paint crimper or something like that. I bought this one from a cosmetic company, Dr. Hauschka, some years ago. In this box is where I keep all the different solvents and fluents. 
This is gum arabic. That is for using with gouache paints to use a medium for distributing that. I have a couple of jars of linseed oil. We have the lifting preparation for watercolor and it also works for acrylic. This is just a varnish which could be used to seal some paints. This is just a kind of citrus salt. Here we have some masking fluid to prevent watercolor from distribution. I really recommend that you get yourself some really sturdy plastic containers so you can see what's inside and snap them closed, keep those fumes contained. In this box, I keep all the different acrylic paints. As you can see, I have a number of brands here. I do return again and again to my favorite Winsor & Newton colors. This brand really mixes well, also good for keeping, it doesn't dry up, and the colors I love, they're so true. But if you can't get that one, I also love this brand, Interactive by Atelier. It's a really good brand and these are superior acrylics. They won't dry up on you like some of the other brands. All you need is red, yellow, and blue plus black and white and burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Those will get you started. If you get a really good color and you don't want to risk trying to mix it up again because it's always hard to get the same color twice, you could buy some medium like this, an extender. It's called a glaze, but it really just makes more of the same color, not to be confused with white, which would lighten the color. That would wrap up Studio Tour Part 2, covering the different kinds of paints that I use. Thanks for watching. Please support my Patreon at Awe Studio.